Welcome back, everyone. We are to part two, which in reality, this means in your textbook section 5.3. And we're going to talk about a binomial probability distribution. So this is the only discrete probability distribution that we are going to focus on. And it's our first probability distribution, so very exciting. Uh, there's a few criteria for the binomial probability experiment. The experiment is performed a fixed number of times. Each repetition is called a trial, and n is going to be the number of trials. Trials must be independent. Uh, so picture flipping a coin. Every time you flip a coin, you have a 50% chance of getting a heads. Uh, for each tr trial, there are mutually exclusive outcomes, success or failure. This is what the literally what makes it a binomial. So the word bi or the prefix bi is in binomial, which means two. And this is what this means. It's either a success or it's a failure. P is the probability of success. Q is the complement of P is the probability of failure. And the probability of success remains the same for each trial. In other words, every time you flip a coin, you have exactly a 50% chance of getting a heads every single time. All right, and we have a fancy formula here that we are not going to use, but uh, it's still in my notes. But um, I'm going to actually have us find in our calculator binom CDF. And it's going to be the lower. I'm sorry, the total number of trials. probability of success and our X. All right, so this first part is just practice using um, our calculator. So get your uh, graphing calculators ready and, and um, actually go along with me, uh, be it a, a, an emulator like mine is or a physical one. Uh, but you will definitely need um, a graphing calculator of some sort for this. Uh, I don't think any of the smaller ones will have this. Example seven, a binomial experiment is conducted with the given parameters. X represents the number of successes. Find the probability. Okay. So in this case, your binom CDF only knows less than. And you can see if we look further down the list, we have some greater thans um, as well as um, some equal to, and we'll, we'll talk about how to handle that in just a moment. N is eight in this case, which means we could be successful zero times, one time, two, three, four times, five times, six times, seven times, or all eight times. The probability of success in this case is 0 0.3 or 30% chance of success for each trial. And we want to know the probability, and this is important, five, including five and below. That's the X is less than or equal to five. So notice we are including five in this one. Number of trials in this case is eight. Probability of success, 0 0.3. And it's going to be five and below. And let's see in the calculator where this is. Most graphing calculators, it's in the same place. If you have a Casio, it's going to be a little different. All right. Now, if you can see above my VARS button, if you look all the way to the right where it says clear and the button right next to it says VARS and above the VARS it says distri that's my distribution. So I'm going to hit second first and distribution. And here are all of my distributions. And I'm going to scroll down until I get to my binomial CDF. There's also a PDF there. We'll talk about what the PDF represents. But right now we're doing binom CDF. Now your interface may be different. It say, may say number of trials and then prob probability and then X or something like that, but it's still the same order. So eight comma 0 0.3 comma five. Now, if you have the other interface where it has each line, it has number of trials, probability, don't put any commas in at all. You're just gonna put the eight, the 0 0.3 and the five. Either way, we should end up with the same value. So really good chance that uh, there's going to be five successes or four successes or three or two or one or zero successes, 98.87%. Let's do another one. 
and I'm going to, this one has seven, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven successes. Now this one's a little different than the previous one. The previous one said less than or equal to five. This one says strictly less than four. Strictly less than four means we are not including the four. Just up to three in this case. Again, note, we are not including the four. So second VARS binom CDF, seven comma 0 0.6 comma three. So 0 0.289792 is what I'm getting. All right, next up. We have zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Total trials. They want less than or equal to three. So notice in this case, we are including the three because it says less than or equal to. I go to second distributions, scroll down, binom CDF, six, 0 0.2, and three. So hopefully you start getting the hang of this. All right, so things are gonna change a little bit because we don't have x is less than anymore for this one, we have x is equal to. In other words, we wanna know out of these eight trials with a 50% chance of success each time, what's the probability of getting exactly four successes? Well, that's gonna change slightly. This is now going to be binom PDF. And that is solely because we have an equal to here. And again, it's gonna be eight, 0 0.5 and four. So I'm gonna to go to second distributions, binom PDF now. And I'm getting this. So this is if we want exactly four successes. What's the probability? About 27% chance of that. Now we are to the tricky part. What if it's greater than? Well, our calculator only knows less than. Uh, some of the ones you can tell it to go greater than, things like that now, some of the newer ones, but I'm gonna assume um, and teach you just this one way. Uh, there are 10 trials in this case. And they want to know the probability of getting higher than seven. Notice it's not including seven. So they only want eight and above. Well, we're going to have to trick it. Because we only know less than. So what is the opposite of eight and above? That's going to be seven and below. So here's how I'm going to write this. One minus binom CDF of 10... 0 0.4, and now we're going to include the 7 because it's the opposite of 8 and above. The opposite of that is 7 and below. So we're going to do literally 1 minus, going toward distribution, CDF, um, even if your interface is different, when you hit enter, it's going to put it down as 1 minus binom CDF and all that. And we hit go. Really low probability here. If there being eight and above, 0 0.01229, we'll say.
And for the last one on this page, of the eight trials, 90% chance of success, quite high. And what they are looking for is they want to know five, including five and above. So this is what they want, but what we're gonna have to do is trick it a little bit. We're gonna say one minus four and below. All right. And that is what I'm getting. All right. Let's apply what we've just learned. And we're going to hang out with Larry for a bit. Larry's batting average is uh, 0 0.2, meaning 20% of the time he uh, gets a hit. Now, um, in baseball, of course, we would say he has a 200 batting average. Um, and actually, 20% is, is not very high, but that's okay. We're, we're hanging with, with Larry here. So we are going to um, assume that he's going to be at bat five times. So because his batting average is low, he's probably not going to get five hits out of all five this time. He just there's a very low probability of that. So the first part says, how likely is that that he'll get at most three hits? At most three hits. That means we are here. Uh, this will translate this. This is literally x is uh, less than or equal to three. So this be binom. CDF, five times at bat, 20% chance of success, and three or less. Just like we learned, no problem. Um, now, this includes that he doesn't get any hits. <laughs> so uh, that's why the probability is high, uh, so high. How likely is it that he'll get at least two hits? At least two hits means two hits or more. So for this one, x is bigger than or equal to 2. Now, if you recall, that means we have to do the opposite with the one minus. So it means this, we need that one minus. One minus second. Five, comma, two, one. Now, how likely is it that he'll get fewer than two hits? Let's see what that means. Fewer than two hits, that is, notice that means he's not even getting two hits. So it's fewer than two hits. And we're less than again, so this is x is less than two. Fine, non CDF. Notice that 
notice it's the complement of the previous problem. So I could do one minus the previous answer, but we'll actually do the, the probability, the distribution. Five comma zero point two comma one. And notice if you added those last two answers that you see in my calculator there, we're gonna get exactly one because they're exactly complements of one another. And the last one, how likely is it that he'll get exactly three hits? Well, they're saying exactly three. This is gonna become and, um, PDF. No, I'm over exaggerating the P just so we know that we're, we're doing that. And remember, this is a PDF, not the CDF. Not a great chance that Larry's going to get three hits. A little over 5% chance of that happening. All right, let's answer an Alex question. Destination weddings. 26% of couples who plan to marry this year are planning a destination wedding. I'm seeing that. Assume the variable is binomial. In a random sample of 10 couples who plan to marry, Find the probability of the following and run your answers uh, to at least four decimal places. Okay, part A. Fewer than four couples have a destination wedding. And let me write out for us. You don't have to write these out, but I think it's, it's a good visual for us to see. So fewer than four couples will have a destination wedding. So that tells me fewer than four, this is X is less than four. So I'm seeing binom CDF, 10, two, six, and in this case, three. is about 75% chance that fewer than four will have a destination. Uh, part B says uh, exactly five couples will have a destination. Web. No, it says exactly five. They're sort of over-exaggerating that, which is fine. But this means binom. Uh, you know what, let me do this. This means, uh, let me, this means exactly five. So we're going here, exactly five. So this means X equals five. This is a PDF because it's exactly five. The second distributions binom PDF ten comma zero point two six comma five. Not a huge probability for that. Part C at least five couples. So at least five couples is here. And now that we have, this is an X is bigger than or equal to five, which means for our purposes, we are going to be four and down, which means we have to do one minus 
Inom CDF. 0.26 and 4. Here we are. All right, our next example is a multiple choice exam. A student takes a 19 question multiple choice exam with two choices for each question and guesses on each question. Assume the variable is binomial. All right, let's first of all start out. N is 19. And because there's only two choices with one correct, that means that the probability of success is one out of two or 0.5. And what is the probability of guessing at least? Now, I'm not going to write out all 19 of these possibilities, but at least nine means x is bigger than or equal to seven, which means we're gonna to have to do the complement of six and down. So one minus binom CDF, 19, 50% chance of success. And the opposite of X is greater than or equal to seven is X is six and less. It's important to have that one minus in there. So we're looking at 0.916.47, we'll say. And I'm hoping you can see that you can apply this to lots of things in your everyday life. All right, next up, binomial problems, which is advanced, whatever well, that means. All right, a new surgery is successful um, 80, 85% of the time. If the results of six such surgeries are randomly sampled, what is the probability that fewer than five of them are successful? So fewer than five means four and less is how I'm reading that. So this is looking to me like we have N, probability of success, 0.85. And for this one, it is saying fewer than five. This means X is strictly less than five, which means we're gonna go four and lower. So binom CDF. That's how I'm seeing that. Second distributions. Binom CDF, 6, 0.85, and 4. It's really nice when the calculator does all the work for you. So only a little over 22% chance of uh, that uh, less than five of them will be successful. All right, last one for Alex on this, and then we switch over to the last part. A multiple choice test has five questions each, of which has five questions, each of which has four possible answers, only one of which is correct. So let's write out what we have here. We have N is five. Probability of success is the one out of the four, or 0 0.25. If Judy, who forgot to study for the test, guesses on all questions, what is the probability that she will answer exactly two questions correctly? Ooh, this is gonna be binom PDF. The 
She gets exactly two questions correct. Remember, this is the PDF one. Be careful. PDF. So I'm getting zero point two six three six seven. Not so great for Judy. All right, we're to the last part of the lesson. And it's not particularly difficult. Now, when checking for unusual results in a binomial experiment, it should be unusual results are going to be between down two standard deviations and up two standard deviations. We've done this before. This is not new for us. So as long as we're within two standard deviations, this is the usual results. And we are assuming that if we don't know if it's normally distributed or not, n times p times q, it should be bigger than or equal to 10. So in other words, we're applying the empirical rule, which we've done before. So two standard deviations up and down, if you remember with the empirical rule, represent about 95% of all of the data. For a fixed p, uh, as the number of trials n in a binomial experiment increases, the probability distribution of a random variable x becomes bell-shaped. And again, n times p times q. q is the complement of p. That product should be bigger than or equal to 10. Then we can assume that it is approximately bell-shaped. And here are some binomial distribution graphs. And you can see as n increases, it starts to look more and more like a nice bell curve. The two main formulas that we need are here for the mean and here for the standard deviation. And let's jump into it. First off, we're going to find the mean. According to an al almanac, 70% of adult smokers started smoking before turning 18 years old. There are 300 trials of the experiment. Round the near to the nearest tenth as needed. First, we're going to find the mean, which is going to be 70% of the 300. So 0 0.7 times 300, 210 smokers. All right, and I'm going to skip the standard deviation just for a second and go to the next one where we interpret the mean since we have that there. It is expected that a random sample of 300 adult smokers, 210 of them, would have started smoking before 18. So that's what our mean means for us. Now we're gonna find our standard deviation and our formula is the square root of n times p times q, you can see above there. And I wanna make it clear, p is 0.7, q is the complement, 30%. So we have the square root of n 300 times p, 0.7 times Q, 0.3. And I'm going to go the square root of 300 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.3. So this is going to be about 7.93725. And I'm going to keep all those digits for now. All right, we already interpreted the mean. Next, we're going to perform the check that, uh, on the conditions that allows us to conclude it's binomial. That is the pink. The n times p times q should be bigger than or equal to 10. So let's check that. So n times p times q is going to be 300 times 0.7 times 0.3. And as long as that bigger is bigger than 10, then we can assume that it's bell-shaped. We're good. This is definitely bigger than or equal to 10. All right.
So let us go up and down two standard deviations to see our lower boundary. It can be mu minus two times the standard deviation. All right, I guess I should use the other symbol. Two sigma equals 210 minus two times nine point, oops, seven point nine three seven two five and the upper boundary will be mu plus two times sigma which is two ten plus two times seven point nine three seven two five Let's see what we get two ten minus two times seven point nine three seven two five about, these are people, so this is about 194 smokers. Let's go the other way, 210 plus two times 7.93725. But 226 smokers. So those are our usual range. In other words, so let's interpret this just for a second. So let's say that um, out of a, an average of 300 adult smokers, 200 of them have started smoking before turning age 18. Would that be unusual? No. 200 is definitely between 194 and 226. How about 215 smokers out of... That's still within our 194 and 226. So when they ask about... 200, the 300, uh, 255, pardon me. So 200, come on, 255 smokers that started under the age of 18 is unusually high. And for According to a report, 2% of murders are committed with a fire. There are 400 drugs of the experiment. Find the mean. So we have N is 400, and we have P at, not PQ, which is 1 minus P, 1 minus 0. Point Six six two zero point three three eight, and we have everything that we need now. Find the mean. Mu is n times p. Four hundred times zero point six six two, and this is going to be two hundred and sixty five murders. Uh, and I'm going to jump down to interpreting the mean. This means it is expected in a random sample of two hundred sixty five. Murders, oh, sample of, pardon me, 400.
All right, so we are, we just found the standard deviation and it was 9.46057. And we're gonna perform the condition that allows us to know that this is a binomial distribution. So this is N times P times Q. 400 times 0 0.662 times 0 0.338. Let's see what we get. So this is about 90, which is definitely bigger than, or even, so we can assume that it's bell-shaped. And for the last part, we're gonna find the lower boundary which is mu minus two times the standard deviations. Mu plus two standard deviations. Let's see what we get. Minus two times nine point four six zero five seven. So about two hundred and forty six is our lower boundary, and our upper boundary is going to be two sixty five plus two times nine point four. Six zero five seven. So about two eighty four. And these are murders. Again. So would it be unusual to observe 294 murders by a firearm in a random sample of 400 murders? The answer is yes. So 294 would be unusually high. I hope that helps.